Hi, my name is Pat King. I'm here in beautiful Nome, Alaska. I'm here at the GPAA Triple River Camp. I'm up here with some of my friends, and we're here to show you the new Nome Beach Super High Banker. And you can't find a better place in the world than try it from this. This is some of the finest gold and some of the hardest gold to get. You got a lot of black sands, you got a lot of garnet sand, and we're going to see how this machine works, and we're going to do a step-by-step -step demonstration and show you exactly how it works. Of course you can't do any kind of prospecting unless you have the right tools. We have gold pans, a small finish pan, scoop, sniffer bottle, magnet, brush, of course tubs and buckets, a good pair of work gloves and a couple of good shovels. You got to have the right tools to get her done. Let's go get the high banker and let's get it set up and then start working. Well, this looks like as good as a spot as any. Okay, this new no beach box is about 24 inches wide and about six feet long. We're gonna adjust the legs and make sure that we got the right angle. With six feet of box, we need about a half inch per running foot, which makes about three inches of tilt on the box. So right now, I'm gonna adjust the six independent legs and we're going to get it to the right level and then we'll start going through the whole process step by step. Okay, down here we have some wing bolts right here and we're going to loosen that up and we're going to adjust the leg down and what we're going to do is we're going to go through each one of them we don't have to get it perfect at first but we got to make sure we got it pretty close then we'll go in and tweak it once we get a little bit of water flowing through it and see how it works. Every different type of material is going to require a different angle. But when you're dealing with fine gold, you don't want to run it steep. You want to run it as flat as possible where you can get rid of the quartz. But here we got a lot of garnet sand and we got a lot of black sand. So we have to be a little careful and we're going to probably have to go through a few different times to get it adjusted just right. Okay, one of the keys to this new Gnome High Banker is this new matting that we devised. Me and a guy named Bob Lesson, we've been working on this project for about three and a half years now. And what we try to do is make a rubber riffle with a deep recess like a Hungarian riffle. And what happens is, as the water flows over the mat, it creates an eddy current behind that riffle. And then we have some short riffles to make sure that we don't lose nothing. Now with six feet of this, we capture everything. Even gold is uh, fine as face paint. So we're gonna mount these mats into the box now and make sure that we got the mats going the right direction and in the right place. Sweep all this out. And you gotta be careful because sometimes there's gold in here from the previous user. The guy that's been working in this pit over here uh, has been finding some great gold. and He was nice enough to uh, let us work his spot right here, or, or his claim, and uh, we got to make sure that we get these mats in there and get the mats fitted underneath the slip. It's like a little uh, lip that comes up over, and the mat has to fit inside all the way. If not, the sink also acts as a riffle and can get gold trapped in there. In fact, that's a good little device to actually save your gold if you don't let the mat in there. You better make sure you clean it up, because if you bring it to me, I'm going to bang these boxes around and get a lot of fine gold out of them. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sweep out the trough, make sure it's clean, so when I put the rubber piece in, it's nice and tight and snug. Now this box has been used for about a week now, and these guys have been working it pretty hard, but I'll tell you one thing, they've been finding a lot of gold, and no beach, this is the place for it. When sliding in the first mat, the top mat, we got to make sure that we use the mat that has no notches in it. So we're going to slide this thing in, and we're going to try to get it underneath that lip. you got to make sure that you get it pushed in all the way so everything lines up. Okay. Sometimes you start at the corner. Okay. Tuck that piece in there as far as you can. 
okay? Any kind of large gap or opening will create a riffle behind it and it will actually suck gold back in behind there. Look at that, there's a piece of gold right there that was left from the last guy that was operating this. Okay, let's put the second mat in. Now your second mat, the lower mat, has a little notch in it, which corresponds with the notch that's in the sluice box. So what we want to do, we want to slide the mat in, we want to fit it up to the little notch right here, slide it up to about right there, then we're going to overlap them a touch, make sure that our holes all line up good, we'll slide this down just a little bit more, okay, that way it's nice and low. Want to make sure that we can see our little slot right there. Now we're going to take this rod, which will actually slide in through one hole and through the other hole on the other side. And as we rotate this down, it's going to act like a cam and it's going to lock and it's going to create pressure in the center of the mat. So we're going to insert it in this hole. Okay. Takes a little bit of uh, playing with. We're going to insert, insert it in the second hole now. Let's wiggle it back and forth, tap it in a bit. Not too much, you don't want to bend the rod. Now I'm going to push this down. Now look at that. Locks in the top mat to the second mat, just perfect. Make sure that your matting is real flush. Make sure you push down all the mat along the edges because you got a real tight fit. You don't want too much of a gap or you're gonna get gold traveling along the mat on the outside. So we got it all locked in. Uh, let's go through and let's uh, hook up our plumbing to it. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna hook up our pressure hose. Make sure that your gas gets in there and make sure it's nice and clean. Bang on your sand. Okay, so we're gonna put this thing on there. Gotta make sure that you don't cross thread it. So sometimes I'll go reverse until it pops. And then I'll tighten it up. Okay, let's go take a look at the business end and let's get the pump all situated and I'll show you the rest of it. Okay, right here is our two inch intake hose that goes into the pump. This is a newly uh, designed pump, super high performance. And he uses a little horsepower and puts out a lot more pressure than the old ones. It's got a real conical shaped impeller that helps reduce the, um, the resistance from changing the direction of it, the water coming into the intake. And this is one of our new designs and we're uh, quite happy with it. This right here is your Y valve. And this right here comes around here and connects to your vacuum primer. Now by pumping this up and down, probably takes about 30 times what it does is it sucks all the air out of the system displacing it with water okay and when you get a prime start to see water come out do it a little bit more you got to make sure this valve is closed and that this valve is open so it's sucking the air because if you close this It's real hard to pull. So you open it up, sucking that water up. Water's climbing up. Okay, I think the pump is primed. I see that the water has completely filled the cavity and I'm starting to see water flow down the discharge. Now I think we're ready to go. Uh, this machine comes with a uh, 50 foot line of uh, inch and a half dollar braid hose comes with a 25 foot long intake that's down into the water. Uh, we, I've learned a lot of neat little tricks being out here and you know what we're constantly in a learning process trying to build you a better product. Okay let's get this engine started and uh, let's get some water flowing. 